Hey there, Postal here. So I got a request to fly the XP-75. I actually really... wasn't my favorite Tier 7 Heavy Fighter, but uh, it was enjoyable for sure. Um, now with the, the gun buffs, it's just a silly plane. Uh, it's actually very strong and very flexible. Uh, tier 7 Premium American Heavy Fighter, right? And so... Any pilot can go in here, that's pretty nice. You have two engines, technically. Um, although, keep in mind, if one of them gets knocked out, it counts as both of them getting knocked out, which is what it is. You've got two bombs as well. Um, got a lot of flexibility with the airframe, as we're about to see here. It's pretty fast, it's pretty maneuverable. You got a lot going for it. In fact, the thing that kind of balanced it out was it's relatively weak armament. For guns, uh, and now with the buff, um, even that makes it is not a weak thing. Look, you've got ten machine guns here. Um, in a tier seven battle, it's going to be pretty ridiculous. Even in tier eight battles, this plane holds its own. And so, this is one of those planes that really, really benefited from the the buff. Not just the fact that the damage per second is higher. But honestly, the uh, the range probably helped more than anything else. And that guy needed to be turning a little bit quicker. I mean, look what I mean is this is basically a multi-roll with better altitude performance and better speed. Um, it's kind of crazy. It, it turns very, very well. And so let's just keep on pushing here. We've got our. I keep the bombs on here for situations where I need a little extra oomph to capture a sector. Um, dang it! Bad timing here. But this plane can outmaneuver basically every other heavy fighter at its tier. Um, so you can get into dogfights with other heavies and feel pretty confident that you're going to come out on top, turning wise. Um, got reasonable airspeed. Although planes like an ME410 could cause issues as far as airspeed is concerned. But then again, those extra machine gun damage that we're doing here. Ooh. Ooh. Let's uh, try to get out of dodge here. Nose down. Looks like we will be able to pull away from this guy. Excellent. Let's go ahead and get his VB-10. Knock out if we can. Because we're not gonna, we're gonna try to get this guy because he is gonna be the, the biggest threat simply because he's the one with the bigger brain. Swarm of bees, kill! And that's what a swarm of bees will do to you. Um, let's flip over here. Get rid of this guy if we can. Swarm of bees. And you're dead. Some more swarm of bees. You know what? Let's uh, just drop the bombs, shall we? There we go. And we'll still get this FW190. Wasn't sure if he was going away or towards us. Clearly going away. Excellent! And let's get the heck out of Dodge here, shall we? Uh, a BF-109G should be an incredibly huge pain in our butt, if not just an outright hard counter to us. Um, by paying attention to the map and using our boost at appropriate times, we were able to get away from him and then and come back before he realized we were back. Uh, we're up three sectors to one. We've already got uh, almost 9,000 personal points. Uh, let's just keep on pushing. We are in a heavy fighter, so typically you would want to capture as much as possible. Um, at this point, so I'm still doing the mission for 100 aerial target kills. I'm going to try not to go for too many air defense aircraft at this point, just because I want to make sure that the game lasts a little bit longer. If we can, VB-10, as strong as a VB-10 is, it's kind of the opposite of this plane. Its strength is in its guns, whereas this plane's strength is in its flexibility. 
VB-10 doesn't have the altitude or maneuverability that an XP-75 has. And so um, we're typically able to come out on top in those engagements. Let's go ahead and get this A-26B if we can. Oh yeah, he's coming back towards us, that's nice. Swarm of bees engaged. Excellent. ME-410 could be a huge pain in our butt. So let's try to take care of him. Keep using all my boost. Because I want everything to happen faster. I'm going to kill this guy so I can get the ground attacker knocked out. Swarm of bees. What's really killing these guys as quickly as, as all that is, if you've noticed, every single plane I'm hitting, I'm setting on fire. When you've got 10 machine guns hitting a target, you're setting them on fire pretty often. You don't need freaking um, gold ammo to do that. You just have a plethora of machine guns. Let's not crash here. As maneuverable as a XP-75 is, a fighter, it is not. Um, and so, you know, that fire damage adds up, right? Right, of course it does. Thank you, Postal, for pointing out the obvious. Um, but we don't really think about that. We tend to just think of the raw damage output, not the supplemental damage output that happens from setting fires. Unfortunately, I'm not setting any fires to any of these ground attackers. I want to try to get this bomber first. Other people can take care of the ground attacker. Using my boost. Got him knocked out. Heavy fighters back again. VB10. If he's if I'm in the yellow, he's definitely in the yellow. He's basically got multi-roll altitude. Um, well, so we're only up by 150. This game, even though we've been basically owning everything we run into, this game could conceivably go either way still. So we need to be mindful of that, not to throw it. He says as he gets in front of an ME-410, holy cow. Thank goodness he was after the bomber instead. Fortunately, we're in a pretty bad spot here. Well, never mind. Now we're in a very good spot. Uh, that be again the, the BF109G was going to be the biggest threat to us. Um, and I saw him on the map there, but I take a calculated risk. Um, it's really reckless, to be honest. I shouldn't have kept going for the ME410. I should have done something about the BF109G, but luckily he was on low enough health. And I was able to, to take advantage of that. My engine got knocked out. One engine got knocked out, which knocks out again both. And so, c'est la vie. See if I can float quick enough here. Doesn't really look like it. Come on, engines, back in. There we go. Got an ace out of this. <laughs> nice. I'll take that. See if I can catch up to this dough. And can we get? I think we already killed a ground attacker, right? We've we've basically we've earned a McCampbell, haven't we? Um, can I just bomb drop this guy? Maybe. Nope. Bombing my own stuff to see if I can get a kill on a GA. Swarm of V's engage. Don't mind if I do. Oh, he bomb dropped me. Such a shame. Got a cozy dub though. <laughs> Pretty hilarious. Uh. Luckily, it was the end of the battle, and it didn't negatively impact our game. Um, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Again, for me, playing this game, playing fun planes, is more important than playing good planes. Uh, the XP-72, especially after the buff, is now both. Let's head on back. Alright, uh, only three sectors captured, but 10,000 aerial damage done at Tier 7 is pretty darn good. We got a lot of bombers, though, so uh, no complaints there. 22 kills, 
going for the uh, mission number two here. 700 capture points. Um, did some ground damage. I forgot. You've got the bombs on here. And I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, we were able to really just lead the team, right? We had a BF-109G that I'm quite sure was doing some anti-BF-109Ging. Um, either one of these planes could have conceivably been a pain in the butt if they wanted to be, but they've got to really want to be. There's a lot of flexibility with the XP-75 that is just unknown. Everybody tends to focus on the fact it's got 10 machine guns. And yes, it has 10 machine guns. Uh, but there's a lot more to this plane than simply 10 machine guns. You, you have great altitude for your plane type. You have great maneuverability for your plane type. You have good airspeed for your plane type. And so all those things combined is what was made this plane before the guns got buffed. Before it was weak guns, a lot of them, but weak. And the balancing factor was all the rest of the metrics were pretty good on it. Now all the rest of the metrics are pretty good on it and the, the guns got buffed. It's, it's kind of ridiculous, to be honest. Overpowered? No. Very strong? Yes. Um, I keep the two bombs on here for because I guarantee you've been in a battle where you've got a command center and you've killed all the aerial targets and you still can't capture the sector. You just need a little something something. Uh, and that's why I hang on to the bombs. They come in handy more often than not, and so my recommendation is to definitely hang on to them. Another thing that separates this plane from something like the VB-10. Great thing about a premium plane is you can toss in any pilot, so I've got a 10-point pilot in here, my XF-90 pilot, who has Marksman 2, who has Engine Guru 1 and Aerodynamics Expert, and so that certainly helps. XP-75, yes, it's Tier 7, which isn't necessarily the ideal premium plane uh, tier, but this plane is incredibly, incredibly impactful in battles. In a tier 8 battle, I tend to play this more like a multi-role fighter since the speed of um, tier 8 battles tends to be a little bit faster. And if you've got the bombs on here, then you're, you are pretty much a pudgy multi-role fighter. And so the, um, the usefulness of this plane at tier 8 tends to lean a little bit more heavily in that factor. But you saw how quickly 10 machine guns can melt down targets um, especially light targets fighters do not stand too much of a chance as soon as you know an xp-75 is on you you need to be trying to do anything you can to outmaneuver that um, which shouldn't be too difficult it is, this is still a heavy fighter as much as i talk about it being a maneuverable plane it's maneuverable for a heavy fighter it is by no means maneuverable for a fighter even a quote unquote altitude fighter like a bf-109g or a I-220, or a P-51D, all those can easily outmaneuver this plane. So you need to keep that in mind if you're in the fighter. You need to keep that in mind if you're flying around the XP-75 as well. Um, as far as my setup on the plane is concerned, I do have this plane specialized. I really do enjoy this plane. Um, I have the, because you've got two engines, you've actually got two engine slots on here. I've got the um, boost mixture uh, injection system. I've actually put on here lightweight power unit, and the reason being is to give me just a little bit more maneuverability to keep these guns on targets a little bit longer. And again, f fulfill that multi-role type niche that you that I typically play at a tier eight. Um, and so having that little bit more maneuverability definitely helps out. Gas operated action, can't go wrong with that. You've got 10 machine guns. Uh, you know, 10 machine guns times whatever boost you get on the rate of fire is a heck of a lot. And that's why my overall gun armament is at 32. 584 cumulative damage as of right now. And I'm quite sure I can get that above 600 pretty easily once I um, move this up to ultimate equipment. I've also got um, advanced collimator sight. Keep in mind, you only get two options at tier 7, either the cockpit armor or the sight. Cockpit armor at, at the middle tiers is only going to be something I put on bombers and ground attackers. Everything else, multi-rolls, heavy fighters, regular fighters, I'm going to be putting this site on here. As far as consumables are concerned, so I've got first aid package on here. Uh, this plane doesn't catch on fire all that often. Um, there's just no point to a fire, um, you know, firefighter uh, consumable on here. I've got pneumatic control assist on here, again, because uh, uh, more often than not at tier 8, I am acting as a multi-role fighter. It also comes in handy to be able to 
get just a little bit more maneuverability if I'm trying to stay on a target. Uh, however, uh, emergency control system is, is certainly viable, if not probably the smarter way to go for most pilots. Uh, just putting your wings and tail back in, certainly not a bad thing. This consumable setup, I'm going to straight up tell you you shouldn't have this setup. I do this because I like to min-max my planes, and I also know that um, the repercussions of my decision on these consumables, and I'll tell you in just a second what's up. I do recommend engine cooling no matter what, especially if you're specialized. Um, one of your two consumable slots should be engine cooling, giving you 10 seconds of boost uh, back. I've got improved mixture control on here. I do not recommend this for most pilots. Improved mixture control adds to the engine thrust and the cruise speed. But what that means is I don't have the ability to restart my engines. The engines do get knocked out on this plane pretty often. Most hits tend to knock out the engines, which can be frustrating. You saw that I got the engines knocked out uh, just once, I think, in this battle. So manual engine restart is going to be the, the best choice for the vast majority of you, and it's gonna be the best first choice. If you've only got one consumable slot open, you'd probably want the manual engine restart. Again, I know and am willing to deal with the repercussions of my decision. That being said, that my consumable setup is not gonna be the best choice for the vast majority of pilots. I've got universal ammo on here, cause why not, it's 6,000 credits and does a little bit more um, chance of fire and crits. No real reason to put gold ammo on this plane as you've got so much freaking volume of fire that just universal ammo will be more than enough. And so that's my setup on this plane. I had this plane requested uh, to fly. I really enjoy it. Uh, me and VBAT used to go out in flights with both of us having this plane well before the buff. And having 20 machine guns um, punching holes in whatever plane came its way um, was absolutely trollish and fun. And I would imagine at this point it would be even more trollish and fun, um, almost to the point of ridiculousness. Uh, XP-75, a very solid tier 7 heavy fighter. Um, I, I actually highly recommend this plane just for the fun aspect. Um, obviously, if you do want to get this plane, um, get it out of a crate for, for you know, if you win a crate. Um, if you want to purchase this plane, I still recommend waiting for the discount weeks whenever those happen to pop up. Really, honestly, none of the premium planes um, in any of the Wargaming titles are worth the full price. Take advantage of the discount weeks that you can get. I think this is 30% off on the discount weeks. I don't think it's a 50% off plane. I can't really remember. I think tier 6 and above is 30% off. Um, and yeah, then if, if you want to buy it, wait for the, one of those uh, weeks. And uh, I don't think I'll regret it. It's a lot of fun. It's just a... a a swarm of bees death plane and uh, I, I highly enjoy it i'd love to hear your perspective on it do you own this plane do you uh, agree with my um overall thoughts on it is it something that you haven't flown since the buffs uh does this want to encourage you to fly it after the buffs it's a lot of fun i'd love to hear your responses down below i will uh catch you on the next one have a great day everybody